back to some more Baldur's Gate 3 action here with me. And I hope you're out there having a good time wherever and whenever you happen to be. Because I'm having a great time here playing Baldur's Gate 3 just about every day. If I'm not recording, I'm playing with friends uh, in multiplayer sessions just offline. And having a spectacular time trying out all the different types of characters you can build and all the um, different storylines you can follow so um, right now we're playing as of course Inky Dink our um, ultra narcissist with Yankee warlock who has basically sold his soul for power uh, to a an ancient patron and um, he's he's looking for more power. Uh, he's hearing a lot about this absolute. He's got the tadpole in his brain that he can utilize to uh, to kind of control others who also are under the influence of the absolute. And along with his uh, his companions here, we've got Gale, uh, Lazel, who is now. Basil and Shadow Fart, of course. Um, he's looking to um, to try and get closer and closer to the Absolute, and try to acquire more and more power. That's his goal: become powerful and exert his power over others. We got the snoozing guy over here, the scrawny bugbear. He's he's having a good nap. And that's always nice to see, you know. So, what are we getting ourselves into here? Um, let's take a quick look at our party. This is episode 7, I believe. And we've run around a little bit less or somewhere around an hour in length so far. Uh, right now, Inky Dink is not that powerful as far as his physical combat skills. But his warlock power is growing slowly, and he is reveling in every one of those growths. Uh, one thing we did pick up, we did pick up the Necromancy of Thay. I believe that was in our last episode. We haven't done anything with that yet. But I suspect that we will soon. We also picked up this Scroll of Summon Quasit, and... Um, so I think what we're going to do is have a little fun with that. Uh, of course we have Shadow Fart here, our character sheets, let's check those out. Um, Shadow Heart, we're going to respec her because she's not very optimized right now. She's kind of eh, kind of whatever, you know, she's not really great as a cleric right now. She's kind of middle of the road and everything. Um, Gale as well. Kind of weird but it's you know his build is pretty strange lots of odd numbers here don't like to see that same thing with uh basil lots of odd numbers we could probably clean these up and we will do so but not exactly right now i think uh right now it's it's time to oh we actually we we have the speak with dead ritual so we have done um, we have read the book. So good. Um, we also have Lump's Warhorn. Very nice. And so what we're going to do here, what's in our backpack here? We just have a little bit of everything. Let's, let's go ahead and throw some scrolls in there. Not the closet scroll though. I'm going to go ahead and throw some of our other things in. Some of our potions, not all of them. Oh, we don't want that rotten mater. <laughs> this is going to be kind of our catch-all bag of things that we are utilizing here. And wanting to keep hold of. A magic ring, I don't know why we'd want to keep that, but we will. Put this key in our key ring. Put that in there. Definitely want to hang on to that. Put our book in there. Well, maybe we won't put our book in there. Okay. <laughs> Understandable, I suppose. Put some water in there. I don't think we need eight. I think we need maybe three. 
yeah, so... What we want to do, we want to check out this, this scroll of summon quasi today and see what else we can get ourselves into here. And I'm going to put this guy right here for now. I'm going to move some stuff around here. Drop this guy in here. Don't need it there anymore. So what you can do on this hot bar, if you put a bag there with stuff, pouch works to find, just click on it. You can do that in combat as well. And you can utilize this stuff in here. It's very nice. Nice little uh, handy trick there. So let's check out. Since we've done that, let's drop a save. We did a little, little thing with our inventory. Let us summon Quasit here and see what happens. You what? recognize the tiny fiend, a quasit. Wicked creatures often used as familiars. <laughs> Wait, you're not Illy. Uh, Illy? My master, tall, skinny, prick with ears. <laughs> so, you're Shovel's master now. Fine. Well, this is uh, interesting. Uh, you're a disgusting little creature, aren't you? <laughs> and you, slab of beef with nipples, moo. <laughs> Your name is Shovel. Master Illy calls me Shovel. Don't like it? Change it. What would you like to be called? Don't care. Okay. Shovel is fine. So, well, first, Master, cutting locals, raising. Wow. Here's the thing. Again, I I, I want to role play Inky Dink as best that I can to keep right on his personality. In this case, though, as far as what I understand, um, having done this in other, like I said, offline playthroughs, and what I've read about it once it didn't work out so well, if you want to keep this little guy as your companion, you can summon him over and over. You kind of have to say no, and you'll not commit such deeds in my name either. Even though Inky Dink would say, hmm, some light pillage, perhaps a bit of murder to follow. Anyway, so we'll do number one. And we'll pretend that we did number three, okay? Oh, you don't like cutting, spilling, tearing. Boring. Wait, are you horny? For the book. Illy never shuts up. Book this, book that. Blah. <laughs> you have such a way with words. <laughs> Good with tongue. Good at cutting them out, too. Tell you secret. Illy weak. Illy never finished <coughs> book. But master, master can do it. <clears throat> Read book, conquer book. Yes. Yes. Okay. And that's really all you have to do, except for uh, talk to him again. Oh, <gasps> a spell shite! When the fisting starts, use the sparky magic <laughs> to call shovel. Let's kill everything. When the fisting starts. <laughs> okay, so now we have this fine, familiar cheeky quasi spell or ritual that we can do every short rest, and. Um, this little guy is our, our, our familiar, and uh, he can go invisible, and he can also try to scare uh, an enemy for two turns. Uh, he's not very good at that, but uh, <laughs> Shovel is probably, at this point, my favorite character in the game, as I've, I've picked him up ever since I found out that it was a thing you could do. Definitely one of my favorite characters in the game, just because of little one-liners that uh, that he or she, whatever Shovel is, uh, spits out. 
So, here we go. Let's check this place out. Are they moving some furniture in there? What's going on here? Um, let's drop a save since we got shovel. As you approach, a guttural scream and a succession of quick bangs rattle the door. Then, a low moan. Someone or something oh. is having a bit of fun. Um, hello? Anybody in there? Stupid question to ask. Go away! <laughs> okay. Well, wow, what should we do here? I, I think it's fairly obvious what's going on behind these doors, this, this barn door, okay? And, um, you know, Inky Dinks, you know, he's getting a little bit of action on the side, but, uh, you know, he's still not too happy. I mean, you can see it in his face. He's not too happy about what's going on here. He, he's he's, he's kind of thinking he's going to be a spoiled sport. So let's open the door and find out what's going on. Leave it. Whoever's inside doesn't want an audience. And I don't want to fight. <laughs> hmm. She's probably right. But, let's open the door anyway. Whoa! What the hell are you doing? <laughs> um, back away slowly? <laughs> Look at his face, it's like, what the hell? Okay. We need to get out of here with Inky Dink. We got a lot of people with low HP. Inky Dink needs to get over here somewhere out of the way. Chug a potion real quick. Yep, that'll do. We're only level 3 right now. I guess that's fine. Um, hmm. Let's vicious mockery Grucko. And so he has disadvantage on his next attack roll. That's good. Oh, and everybody else. That's lower initiative. Oh my goodness. That looks like it. Gale is in a bad way now. Um yes. Gale. Gale's gonna need uh, a little bit of help here. With some mage armor. Active. So now Gale's got 16 AC. He is almost the highest. He can't really get away. Can't shove anybody. I don't think we take opportunity attacks here. That would be kind of... That would just kind of be silly. So, let's do this. Oh, we're out of spell slots with... with Shadow Fart as well. And she saved. Okay. Um, Shadow Fart's going to back away a little bit here. Oh, we got our little cheeky closet. Shovel. Who's hiding right now? Let's go ahead and try to scare. So frighten cannot move. Frightened entities also have disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls. So we could potentially have both of them with a disadvantage here. Well, he's already used his, so. Let's get the big one here. Oh, okay. She saved against that. <laughs> get out of there, shovel. And Basil's just gonna have to go in, man, and and really. Really try to carry this fight. Uh, disarming attack would be great. 
70% chance to hit. Oh, we gotta try this, right? Oh my goodness, 70% and missed. We're gonna try that again. Oh no, we hit, but she saved against the disarming. Saved against the pommel strike as well, so... This might hurt a little bit. All right. Let's try another frightened. Seventy percent chance. Another save. It's a wisdom save. He has seven wisdom, bro. Are you kidding me? Okay. Okay, she's not going after Gale, that's good. She's Oh, she's going after Ancient Dink. But she's taking a lot of damage. Oh my god, that hurt. Taking a lot of damage on the way out. <laughs> I don't know why, but that is the most hilarious thing. Is Shovel's so happy. That it's fisting time. <laughs> All right. Let's bring Shovel in. It's only nine hit points left. 70% chance to hit, man. What difficulty are we on? This is normal, right? Yeah, we're unbalanced. Okay. Oh, that, that seems rather high chance to hit for, for balance here. 55 looks about right. <laughs> For Shadow Fart, who misses everything always. Right, let's just take her out. Oh no. Okay. Um, let's rally the boss. Get some temporary HP. Inky Dink's turn. Could blade board here, or we could just attack. Only 4 HP. Surely we can get a, get a hit off. There we go. Ooh, we leveled up. We leveled up. Yeah, he's pissed. Greco, we've killed Boothier. His lovely maiden. Oh, Gale. Gale, you need to get out of there, bro. For a wizard in need. Yeah, I know. Pissed. You missed. Not much I can do about that, bro. Devil's coming in to help, though. There we go. Just bring her into melee. Okay, that was a mistake. I understand. Try disarming on him. 60%. And we miss. Rally Gale. Let's bring out the big guns here. And we missed. Good. Ooh. That rally was absolutely necessary there. Come on. Gale was just in a bad spot. There's no getting out of it right now. But he's missing. 50% for each. More potential damage. Okay, that's good. Disarm. One more time. Weapon drop, but oh, we got him. Okay, we leveled up. Excellent, yes. Let's put this far behind us, <laughs> as Shadow Far suggests. Oh my goodness, what is in here? The mangled. He, he was getting pounded on top of a mangled corpse. And a pile of bones? Come on, man. Time to rest. Right. Guess we'll just uh, read this the hard way. Okay. Well, some uh, some food there. Camp supplies, we'll say. Azuth, 
the god of wizards all. Okay. Ooh, a dagger plus one. Let's do that. A beast fit for an ogre. You notice you know. a peculiar dagger protruding from the tough, leathery meat. Hmm. So our best chance is strength. Grasp the handle and pull the dagger with all your might. You can add guidance. 15 DC. And we got it. Okay, with our bonuses, we got it. Nice. Do we get it now? You yank the dagger free, leaving a narrow slit behind. Perfect. Yeah, pocket that. There you go. Five to eight damage. Yeah, this is better than... Because it's showing me Lazel's bonuses. Four to seven. Yeah, it's just better than the regular dagger, obviously. Okay. Good. Oh, a shovel. Always nice. A shovel for our new friend, Shovel. Loose boulder. Usually denotes something is there, but uh, I don't see anything showing up. All right, let's 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 hang out up here and uh, we'll do some leveling up. Well, not much to choose from here. She just got a little bit extra HPs, and we're going to choose Sentinel here. So Sentinel, within, with, when an enemy within melee range attacks an ally, you can use a reaction to make a weapon attack against that enemy. Target ally must not have the Sentinel feet. Can't have two of those in the front line together. You gain advantage on opportunity attacks, and when you hit a creature with an opportunity attack, it can no longer move for the rest of its turn. So very, very good uh, for covering your allies uh, in the back line. We get these features. There we go. And um, she got went from 28 to 36 HP. Again, probably going to re-roll her a little bit. You have my attention. Gail's up next. Okay, so he gets another level two spell slot. Gets a cantrip, a couple spells, and went from 20 to 26 HP. Uh, let's choose our cantrip here. Probably gonna be bone chill because there are certain instances where this would be very useful. Uh, prevents the target from healing until your next turn. Um, and an undead target receives disadvantage on attack rolls. Yep. Sounds good to me. This is where it gets tricky. Because um, we don't really want to double up on what Shadow Fart's going to bring to the table. But Crown of Madness is always good. And no matter what. And. Hmm. Blindness would be nice as well. It's a necromancy ability as well. So we get necromancy and, and enchantment. Hmm. Although Misty Step would probably be Wow, well, Misty Step though. Almost too good to pass up. Yeah, we're, we're going, we got to go with Misty Step. It's just too good. It's way too good. And what do we replace here? So, Fog Cloud. 
think we take that out for blind. And for feet, hmm. Again, he, he's going to get re-rolled here, so this doesn't really matter too much. But I'm going to take a look and see. Does not require concentration, neither does that. I don't think we have too many require concentration. Uh, there's one. That's it. Just one. Might do Spell Sniper. The number you need to roll a critical hit with spells is reduced by one, and this effect can stack. I wonder if that's if you hit a crit, then it's reduced by two for the next spell you cast. If you crit again, reduced by three? I don't know. I don't know exactly what that means. But um, Shocking Grasp would be great if he gets ran up on by anybody. The thing about Shocking Grasp is... Um, the target cannot use reactions and uh, when you're trying to disengage from someone and they get that opportunity attack, that is a reaction. So if you're successful with Shocking Grasp, then you can just run away. Uh, Misty Step has the same benefit. They can't use an opportunity attack when you Misty Step away because you're basically just teleporting. Uh, I think we're going to take Spell Sniper. That sounds pretty good to me. I'm ready. Whatever it takes. And we'll do Shadow Fart here. Again, uh, probably gonna respec her mainly for the stats and probably her subclass. But we will keep her as a cleric. Uh, she's getting another level 2 slot. Again, the cantrip, a new feat. We went from 24 to 31 HP. Again, this is all going to kind of change a, a little bit. I'm not sure if I want to make her into more of a, a battle cleric, where she gets in the front line and starts whacking away and can take a hit, or if I want to just keep her in the back line and, and spec her into just a full healing mentality. Not sure. Right now she's she's kind of going into, you know, the whole backline caster healer type thing. I think is really nice. Uh, so we'll see about that. But for her, since she has so many concentration spells, we're going to get her a war caster. We're going to pick that again when we respect her. Um, you gain advantage on saving throws to maintain concentration on a spell. You can also use a reaction to cast Shocking Grasp at a target moving out of melee range. So, um, I guess you get Shocking Grasp for free. Doesn't have it otherwise, I don't think. Alright, and last but not least, the man, the myth, the legend, the future legend, Inky Dink himself. Level him up here. Okay, 24 to 31 HP, you get a cantrip spell, you can replace a spell, which we may do. So for cantrips, maybe uh, poison spray, bone chill, bone chill is so good, and I think we're going to do that, just um, in case Gale misses on a primary target that can heal itself. We'll have uh, Inky Dink there as a backup. And what for our spell here? I'm thinking Arms of Hadar, maybe. Is we're, we're trying to get Inky Dink as sort of one of those swashbuckling, you know, I'm a melee character and I can also cast Warlock spells type deal. Misty Step again. <laughs> but I think it um, also prevents him from using reactions. Let's go there. And have. I think we're good. I think we're fine there. And for Inky Dink's first feat, we're going to kind of clean up his odd numbers. We're going to do just a straight up ability improvement, dex, 
and charisma. Get those to the next level of bonus. And we're going to go with that. Go down a little savey save. Okay. Excellent. And now we move on with life. Morning star there. Let's get uh, get our pack mule down here. Pick that up. Excellent. All right. We don't have any more short rests, so we'll see what uh, see what the world brings us here. Anything interesting? Anything back here? No. Or anything else this way? I don't think that. I think we cleared this out fairly well. Okay, I think it's kind of time to move on. Uh, the Blighted Village, we've accomplished uh, getting the Necronomicon ish book. We've got our little closet friend here, Bucket. Um, found some, some forbidden love happening here. And um, yeah, we're uh, we're having a good time. That's curious. And we found some treasure. That. Okay. Kind of bugged out there. Lock picks, trap the sound tools. Oh, hello. My my, what manner of place is this? A path to redemption? Or a road to damnation? Hmm. Hard to say, for your journey is just beginning. I like how he's talking to Basil, and not me. Suit the occasion. Hmm. The words to a lullaby, perhaps. The mouse smiled brightly. It outfoxed the cat. Then down came the claw, and that, love, was that. <laughs> they do know how to write them in Cormir, don't they? Well met, I am Raphael. Very much at your service. Hmm. Basil's kind of rough around the edges. She'd probably say, um, three words. If you want to threaten me, don't disguise it. Why, I never. You're paranoid, aren't you? Must be the surroundings. Rather bleak and lonesome. One feels so exposed. This quaint little scene is decidedly too middle of nowhere for my tastes. Is that right? Whoa. There. Wow. Middle of somewhere. You have blood all over her, uh, her sheriff hat. Take me back. Now. And deny you the honor of my hospitality? This is the house of hope where the tired come to rest and the famished come to feed lavishly go on partake enjoy your supper after all it might just be your last is that right <laughs> i will rise as a kithrak your threats do not worry me <laughs> Not easily rattled, I see. Good. Makes the next part that much more. Is she getting some food off the table or what? <laughs> oh, hello. Okay. What's better than a devil you don't know? <laughs> a devil you do. Am I a friend? Potentially. An adversary. Conceivably. But 
A savior? That's for certain. <laughs> um, what makes you think I need saving? Come now. Why play hard to get when you're in deep over your tadpole head? One skull, two tenants, and no solution in sight. I could fix it all like that. You're mad if you think I'll make a deal with the devil. And what is madness but a denial of reality? Still, I have a feeling you'll change your mind before it's changed for you. Try to cure yourself. Shop around. Beg, borrow, and steal. Exhaust every possibility until none are left. And when hope has been whittled down to the very marrow of despair, that's when you'll come knocking on my door. Hope. Nice. <laughs> Such a tease. Take me back. After that, I never want to see you again. By all means, bite the hand that feeds you while you still have teeth. All those pretty little symptoms, sundering skin, dissolving guts, they haven't manifested yet, have they? One might say you're a paragon of luck. I'll be there. When it runs out. Okay. So that happened. Very interesting. I wonder why a devil is interested in in Inky Dink. It doesn't make much sense. What is this? This looks like a battlefield. Blood everywhere. Bloated hyena. Hyena. Mangled corpse. Several bloated hyenas. Blood trail leading up here. Hmm. You know what I think? I think we need a little bit of a rest. This looks like... This looks like something's about to go down. And Gail wants to talk, so let's go back to camp. Take a load off. Gonna gather ourselves after our encounter with a literal devil from the hells. Okay. What do we have in the way of um, items here? What have we stockpiled? Anything good? Not really. And we don't really need this amulet of lost voices. We have permanently speak with the dead from the necromancy of Thay. So we could give that to Gale. You see, basically, well, you'll see. With haste. You'll see what I mean by give it to Gale. Well, there's there's Withers. Look, in our camp. Cool. He wants to talk as well. We'll go talk to Gale first. Spare me a moment, if you please. I've something important to discuss with you. We've been traveling together for a while now, and it's just about time that I shared something with you. It's a rather personal matter that I'd have preferred to keep quiet, but... Needs must when the devil drives. I have no choice but to speak. You see, I have this condition. Very different from the parasite we share, but just as deadly. 
What kind of condition? The specifics are rather personal, but suffice it to say that it is a malady I've learned to live with. Though not without some effort. What it comes down to is this. Every so often, I need to get my hands on a powerful magical item and absorb the weave inside. Hmm. What kind of items are we talking about exactly? Oh, staffs, tomes, cowls. The form doesn't matter, so long as it's brimming with weave. It's been days since I last consumed an artifact, since before we were abducted. It is time, and by that I mean it's imperative that I find and consume strands of weave at the earliest possible juncture. I don't like the sound of that. I fail to see why you need me to help you with this. You've done fine without me so far. A fair point. However, until recently, I was able to rely on a supply of artifacts stored in my tower in Waterdeep. A supply that has now run dry. The reality of the matter is that a lone wizard with a chronic impairment such as my own is not in the most ideal of situations with regards to self-defense. The manner of artifacts I need are not often found waiting patiently on a shopkeep's shelf. One usually has to lift them delicately from trap-filled tombs or prize them from the hands of violent ne'er-do-wells. There'll be danger hmm. involved. Or great cost. Why exactly would I risk either of those things for a wizard I barely know? Valid question. If not out of the simple goodness of your heart, then perhaps your own self-interest might be sufficient motivation. I mean, a wizard like me around is quite the boon when facing the perils that stalk these lands. It'd be far harder for me to assist you if I could barely stand upright. Please, trust me. Your help could be the difference between life and death. No. If you aren't willing to tell me the truth, I'm not helping you. I understand that I am asking for a lot, but I can't tell you everything. Not yet, anyway. Please, reconsider. You aren't going to drop this, are you? No. <laughs> Neither am I. We'll have to see who gives up first. I don't know how else I can explain the imperative nature of this issue. You can't simply dismiss it. What will happen to this item should I give it to you? I will consume the magic inside. What was a powerful artifact will be rendered no more than a trinket. But it will save my life. Even if only temporarily. I'll give you this one. Wait, I can't give him that one? Where's the thing? Oh no! Are you kidding me? Picked up the locket specifically to give it to him. Huh. Well that's on... I guess it's going to be the Watcher's Guide. Death's promise when the spear misses its target, the wielder's next attack roll against that target gains true strike. Thank you. It's like a lullaby that sings to sleep the demon inside. A metaphorical demon, I haste to point out, but no less dangerous. And no less bound to wake up again to continue its ravages. Such is the nature of all monsters. Your gratitude doesn't make up for what I lost. What are you going to do to compensate me? Compose a thousand stands that owe, titled a gale of thanks and adulation? Sincerely, though. I understand I ask a lot from you with few answers in return. But in time, all will be told. Oh, the foreshadowing. Just so you know, this was the last time I part with such a valuable item. I understand your reluctance. But to ignore my condition is to invite catastrophe. Please, think on the matter. 
I trust that during our travels you'll navigate ample leagues of progressive insight. Okay. Here's Bucket or Shovel. <laughs> it's got why did I call him Bucket? Fuck the withers. We meet again, as predicted. I shall be here in thy camp for whenever thou hast need of my services. What kind of services can a skeleton offer? A mending of the threads between life and death. Should thou or any of thy compatriots perish, I will cleave soul to body once more. That's incredibly powerful magic. Why is it so easy for you? Because it is my calling. There is little else to explain. No one's dead on my side at the moment, though. Indeed. Farewell. Well, that was something. See what Basil has to say. I'm sorry, Sheriff Bazel. Well, let him suck up all the magic he needs, as long as he doesn't snack on a Githyanki silver sword. Are you certain that the crash is our only path to purification? Entirely. I was as devoted to my studies as I was to my training. Each crash contains a safest purification device. So I learned from the writings in the Kaleer Library. The library was a gift from Vlakith herself, that we may gain total understanding. My own Varsh taught us nothing of this purification. Or you simply weren't listening. Countless scholars roam the astral sea and beyond, observing the ways of our lessers, exploring planes so distant order turns to chaos and cold fires rage. The planes are ever quaking, and their peoples ever shifting. The Githyanki possess an eternity of knowledge. Yet we still collect more. Infinities upon infinities. Now I have seen you enlightened, I will report your progress to Vlakith herself once I ascend. Thinking of that worm inside me is driving me mad. We were flayed, beaten, burned, and poisoned in our training. It is our duty to withstand suffering, and our pleasure to conquer it. Come, we must locate a crash. Observe everything. Assume nothing. What might happen should we not be purified? Your ignorance concerns me. It starts with a fever and memory loss. Then you start to hallucinate. Your hair falls out, and you bleed from every orifice. Your bones will change form. Your jaw will split to allow room for four great tentacles. All skin will turn to gore and be shed to reveal new flesh underneath. Then you have wow. ceased to exist, and a mind flayer is born. That's not going to happen. We will find a cure. Words forged in steel. May your actions express the same metal. We must find our kind and be rid of the parasite. It's as simple as that. The first symptoms should have long since started, though. That is what puzzles me. You're worried we haven't changed? This is good news. Yes, if you give it no further thought. But anomalies lead to surprises. Bad surprises. Besides, what hasn't happened may yet come to pass. Okay. Bazel had a lot to say there. Let's check out Asterion. Darion? Asterion? I've known people who are hungry for power. Darion. But Gale takes it a bit too literally for my liking. I wonder how he does it. Why he does it. <laughs> I'm sure all will be revealed in time. But I don't like it. A waste of perfectly good treasure. I agree. So, how does someone become a vampire, exactly? 
It's simple. Just find a vampire that will drink your blood and turn you into a vampire spawn. Their obedient puppet. In theory, the next step is to drink their blood. Once you've done that, you're free. And a true vampire. So they bite you, you bite them. <laughs> yes and no. The problem is, once you're a vampire spawn, they completely control you. They have to allow you to bite them. And why would they do that? Vampires are power-hungry creatures. They won't lose a servant to create a competitor. Trust me. It doesn't happen. Hmm. Tell me about yourself. What's to tell? I was sired by a vampire named Cazador. Everything before that is so long ago, it's ancient history. And everything that came after, well, um, I'd rather not reflect on it. You must remember your life before that. I was a magistrate, working to keep the peace in Baldur's Gate. Imprisoning troublemakers, that kind of thing. I can't remember much, truth be told. Centuries of torment will do that to you. Centuries, eh? How were you turned? I was attacked. A gang of vagrants, a tribe of wandering gur, took issue with a ruling I'd made. They beat me to death's door when Cazador appeared. He chased them off and offered to save me, to give me eternal life. Given that my choices were eternal life or bleed to death on the street, I took him up on the offer. It was only afterwards I realized just how long eternity could be. You know, people often wonder about, you know, extending the human life. And a lot of times, I don't know, I don't really think that I would want to live forever. Whether it be in some construct, some artificial intelligence brain that my consciousness is in, or just frozen and rethought out later, you know, thousands of years later. I don't know. I, I, think, um, I think the beauty of life is that it will absolutely end one day. And that gives you urgency to live it. But anyway, uh, philosophy be damned. Tell me about your history. Why do you insist on exhuming the past? I was a slave. A vampire spawn. Kept by the Tsar family. Perhaps I still am. I was never able to resist their commands. But now, I've been conveniently lost. They won't ever control me again. Wow. Okay. Very interesting little backstory for Astari Astarion. See what Shadow Fart has to say. I know that look. You're wondering why I was in pain before. Let's just clear the air about that now. It's just an old wound that hurts me from time to time. Nothing to be concerned about. It's nothing to do with the tadpoles, at least, in case your imagination is in danger of getting away from you. It's just something I have to live with. Sounds like she's covering up for something, to be honest. The way she just kind of jumped into assuming what I was thinking and giving an explanation based on her assumptions. How badly does it hurt? Quite a lot, if I'm being honest. But it always passes quickly, so I can manage. Are you sure it's not connected to the tadpoles? Positive. You can trust me on that. I still think you're keeping something from me. You've already pestered me with your notions once today. If I have something to add, I'll tell you. <laughs> wow. Alrighty, well, that'll end that conversation. 
find out what Will has to say as well. Gale slurped that thing up like a horse with a carrot. <laughs> I hope he got what he needed from it. Wow. Uh, what do you make of Raphael? He brings to mind a story. The Devil with the Silver Tongue. An old fairy tale my father read to me. The kind with a hero, a villain, and a moral. A farmer made a deal with the devil, so the story goes. In exchange for the farmer's dearest fruit, the devil granted him a bottomless coin purse. The farmer's dearest fruit, naturally, was no apple nor peach, but his beloved daughter. We can learn a lot from fairy tales, don't you think? Get to the point. Do not trust Raphael. <laughs> Is that plain enough? Refuse him, no matter how tempting the offer, no matter how delicious the feast he lays out for you, the cost will be too great. He spoke of a cure. We have to at least hear him out. Take a single step towards him, and he'll dog you the whole journey. You might think you'd give up anything for a cure, but the devil won't take just anything. He'll take everything. Tell me, Will, how did you come to be the Blade of Frontiers? My father once said, One does not pursue a champion's life. One merely answers its call. So it was for me. I was hunting near the Cloakwood when I heard it. A child crying out from a lone farmstead. I found him in the fields flanked by goblins. His mother's corpse bled into the soil next to him. I don't remember much of the battle, but I remember drying the boy's tears after. Goblins? Pitiful vermin. Easy to kill. Hardly worth getting worked up about. Tell that to the boy shivering over his mother's ravaged corpse. It makes me angry to think about it still. Angry at the monsters preying on innocence. Angry at the so-called good gods for tolerating the cruelty of the evil. Angry at myself that it took so long for me to see the coast suffering. The frontiers demanded a blade. And so I heeded. Yet you were chasing a devil in the hells. How did that come about? Karlak's fires raged in Baldur's Gate before she escaped to Avernus. As my source told it. And she was planning to return. One of the archdevils Ariel's own. Chaos incarnate, a devil with pure fire for a heart. I made my way to Avernus to stop her. She fled from my reach, even climbed aboard the Mind Flayer ship as it screeched through the hells. I followed in close pursuit. I can't bear to imagine the lives Karlak might be taking, the damage she might be doing. Who is this source of yours? A powerful friend with a keen interest in privacy I'm sworn to say no more a powerful friend hmm like a warlock patron perhaps you are a warlock you know about bound souls and frozen tongues I can only leave the rest to your imagination suffice to say I hunt monsters devils included and I will do what I can to quench the coast of their flame All right, we've talked to everybody. Let's go ahead and get a rest in here. In the day, everybody looks satisfied with the conversations. <laughs> oh no, somebody does want to speak with me. I think it's looks like it's Gale over here. the spot I can feel it work yeah we, we already had the conversation Gail uh, just go to sleep bud what if this goes a little haywire here there we go 40 of 40 I've come to sate you and be sated oh my I need 
You follow. Okay. So Bazel has come to collect on our on our offer from earlier. I am ready. So you think. Let's see if you're right. You are a child of Gith. You train relentlessly. You know your body inside and out. It is time you knew mine. He's like, where are you taking me? Whoa, 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 whoa. Um. Excuse me, why are you naked? Uh, we'll have to do a little bit of uh, covering that up. A little uh, modesty coverage there. Uh, we're gonna do the no. You submit to me. After you can take what you desire. <laughs> Jesus. I am ready. That is so bizarre. You awake okay. in pain. <laughs> your back, your hands, even your tongue ache. It's time to rise. Dawn is upon us. You made a fine partner. You will be an effective Kithrak. Of course. I'm as extraordinary a lover as I am a warrior. You are a fit specimen yourself, Kin. Fit enough to wield a silver sword of your own, should Vlakith be so generous. What comes next for us? Next? We seek purification. I might even lay you again, should my whim so take me. But do not deceive yourself. Our bond runs no deeper. Up now. The sun soon rises. <laughs> every breath, every blink proves exhausting. Okay. A long day awaits you. All right, well. That was something. Let's take a peek at those settings, shall we? All righty. Well, the... Uh... <laughs> Apparently, the default mode on this game is everybody can get naked, and that's uh, that's not good for a uh, a video series, a gameplay series. I'm gonna try to show it to other people. So, um, apologies that I had to cover up pretty much that whole scene. Um, I have since unchecked those boxes, looking for them, and they're under the accessibility options. So anyway, um, with that being said and done, with the deed being done, and uh, officially, Bazel and Inky Dink are now an official item here. Let me get him into... No, no, no. Turn around. There you go. Inky Dink and Bazel are an official item now. Sheriff Bazel. I think that's going to wrap up this episode. Really not much happened. We had a little bit of combat early on, obviously. Uh, this has been like nothing but people being naked and doing things that they're not supposed to be doing on camera, okay? That's pretty much what this episode has been all about. From start to finish. Uh, and in the middle, we had a lot of a lot of conversations, a little bit of leveling up. Okay. Uh, next time we're going to come back, and all of our companions are going to be respect. 
uh, tweaked ever so slightly. And we'll cover all of, all of that in uh, in the next episode. I'm going to do that off camera. Just get it out of the way. And um, so I want to thank you for tuning in for this uh, rather um, unsettling episode of the adventures of Inky Dink the Gith Yankee Warlock. And apparently his... Uh, his infatuation with Bazel here, Sheriff Bazel. So I hope you enjoyed the episode and uh, had a little bit of fun with us along the way. Hope that you'll uh, leave us a like and a comment down below. Let me know what you think about uh, what happened here. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.